The following program contains shocking amounts of primary sources. If you suffer from addiction to rumors, this show might not be right for you. Check with your cheerleading captain. Proclaiming the truth in the highways and byways of the world. Fighting for justice in the dark alleys of politics. Raising the voice of resistance to a fevered pitch. And he knows where to find the best and worst jail food in America. Randall Terry. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, your servant, Randall. You know, I'm tired of all the insults. Today, today. Oh, I'm going to play nice. Yeah, I'm going to play nice. Today's program brought to you in part by our president, President Obama, perhaps the greatest president in American history, and by MSNBC, the source for news, always true. I'll be right back after a quick word from Joy the Hammer. And frankly, I don't even like Joy the Hammer. I don't even know why we give him a chance to talk on this show. Just let's get it over. Go. I have to admit, there are times that I wish I was on the outside. Then, of course, there are other times when I think to myself, I'm safer in here than I am out there. You got crazy people like Charlie Sheen threatening to kill people. What is that? Anyway, while I'm here, I get to watch a lot of television. So in addition to Law and Order reruns, I do watch a lot of news, usually Fox. I can't stand those destaduras over at CNN and NBC, whatever, they make me crazy. I've come to the conclusion that this nation is being run usually by criminals. And I mean that with precision. And so I thought to myself, if these wise guys, these crackpots, can run our government, why not me? And so I've decided to offer my name for the United States Senate for 2012. Now you may say, Mr. Hammer, how could you as a convicted felon possibly run for office? It is a valid question to which I say this. The difference between me and these other destaduras that are in office right now is that I got my jail time out of the way before I got elected. Vote for Joey the Hammer. Welcome to today's program, friend. This will be a show for the ages, one that you're going to want to tell your friends to watch when it's an archive. Trust me on this. In today's program, I intend to play nice. <laughs> you're not clinically capable of playing nice, you big fibber. Well, that's probably true. So what I'm going to do, in, in order that I could flow with other broadcasters, other television shows, people on the radio, people in our pulpits, I'm going to help you to go along and get along. Oh, <laughs> this is going to be confusing, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's my intention. Basically, I realize that I'm a troublemaker. And it might not be in the best interest of the country to have people like me around. I'm always causing distress, dissension, division. And so for this program, I'm going to tell you what other people tell you. I'm going to tell you the exact opposite of what I believe from now until the end of the program. And it'll be up to you to figure out what you really should do. Let's start, by the way, I've got a checklist here, so I'm going to go over that as I go. Let's start with uh, something that usually I talk about, abortion. Abortion is not that big a deal, all right? The first law of the animal kingdom is the survival of the fittest. Unborn babies, fetuses, blobs of cells, obviously many of them are unwanted and should be discarded. In the animal kingdom, many animals destroy their young. Many animals eat their young. So why not? behave like the rest of the animal kingdom. A woman has a right over her own body. She should be able to do what she wants with her body when she wants to. End of story. Homosexual marriage. Well, who are you? Who am I to tell two loving adults what they can and cannot do in a loving relationship? If two 
men want to be married, frankly, it's their choice. And I don't think that it's appropriate for us to try and impose an antiquated, out of date, arcane morality on them. And if you and I would simply be more loving and more understanding, well, we would all get along a lot better. The Bible. My advice to those of you who are Christians is, number one, read the Bible as if it were a lot of allegories. Not necessarily true in the ultimate sense of the word, but that it has good lessons to be learned. I want to emphasize, don't, don't waste your time reading the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, God was very grumpy. Uh, he was killing a lot of people. There were a lot of wars and things. I, if you're going to read the Bible at all, I emphasize, or I want to ask you to, I emphasize, read the New Testament. Read how Jesus promoted love, love, and then more love. If you'll read the New Testament, skip the Old Testament, and even read the New Testament sparingly, you'll be a lot better off as a person. History. Why waste your time reading and studying history when there's so much cool stuff on television right now that you can watch? You can watch uh, Two and a Half Men. You can follow the Charlie Sheen saga. There are so many salacious rumors out there. So many things to pique your interest and to, to get inside of your soul and kind of get the adrenaline flowing, the juices flowing in your own imagination. You can watch people do stuff on television that you probably wouldn't even do, but you can live vicariously through them and not waste your time studying history. Money. Well, if I were you, what I would do is, number one, I would not save. Why save? Spend. Spend your children's inheritance. Spend your grandchildren's inheritance. Make yourself happy with the money that you have. And trust in the dollar. Don't worry about these people that say that, that the dollar is on the verge of collapse. The people who say invest in gold and buy silver, forget about all that. Trust the American dollar. It's been here since the dawn of time, and it's going to be here until the end of time. All right, let's talk about debt. Why wait to save up money to buy something that you want when you can charge it? Sears, pennies, they'll give you a credit card. All you have to do is apply, even if your credit isn't that good. If you've got a three or a four year old car, why drive around in something that could break down when you could have a brand new car? car. All you need is a small payment book. It works for others. Why shouldn't it work for you? Let's see. All right, let's talk just for a minute about our spiritual leaders. I can't think of a time in history, and by the way, I've given up studying history, but I can't think of a time in history when we've had better Catholic bishops and better evangelical and Protestant leaders than right now. You see very few of them rocking the boat. I mean, you remember Jerry Falwell, D. James Kennedy, Cardinal O'Connor. These men were always causing troubles. They were very judgmental. They made people feel uncomfortable. They're gone, all right? They're dead. And the new crop of leaders that have arisen, talking about a purpose-filled life, talking about blending Islam and Christianity together. I think the phrase now is Chrislam. See, that's the wave of the future. We need preachers who are going to tell us how to have more faith so we can get more money, right? Get a better return on our spiritual investment so that we can have more to consume upon ourselves for the glory of God. Television. I know that I've been a harsh critic about TV in times past, but the more I've thought about it, the more I think that you should spend as much time in front of the TV as you possibly can. Is it a nice day outside? The pollen count could be high. If you go out and run around, you could fall down, you could trip, you could hurt yourself. Your children are far better off watching those three to six hours a day than they are reading or outside exercising. Invest more time in your television. You bought it. You should enjoy it. The internet. 
You know, when you're on the internet, you get to feel like you're a part of something that's happening. You can blog anonymously, you can take a stand on issues, or you can just watch other people. It used to be that there were three TV stations. Then we got cable and there were a lot more. Now there's the internet. You can find just about anything you want, anytime you want. Just use that search engine. Why waste your time talking to your spouse, reading to your children, when for a couple hundred bucks, you can buy a laptop for every single person in your family, and each of you spend quality time online. When we come back from this break, I'm going to talk to you about the price of food and the price of gas. I'm going to set you free. Don't go. Randall always liked my father because of his wit. An old friend of Dad's one morning asked him, Hi, Ed, how have you been? And Dad said, Ever since I got up this morning, I've been sick in bed on two chairs. Moments with Moses. You shall not bring the hire of a harlot or the wages of a dog into the house of the Lord your God in payment for any vow. For both of these are an abomination to the Lord your God. Welcome back to the program, friend. I'm dedicating this show today to being like one of the false prophets that are referenced in the book of Jeremiah or in the book of Zechariah. I want you to know peace. Nothing evil will befall America. Nothing is going to go wrong. Everything is going to be okay. Let's pick up with food. You should basically eat anything you want anytime you want. Who said that we need to have five food groups and three meals a day? That's somebody's law and somebody's rule that they're imposing on us. Go for grease. Go for animal fats. Eat as much salt as you possibly can because it makes everything taste so much better. And why bother eating raw vegetables? They taste wretched. They get hung up in your teeth. I would go for sweets, a lot of chocolate, a lot of soda pop. And if you do get type 2 diabetes, so what? A lot of people have it and they learn to live with it. Gasoline. A lot of people are very concerned about the price of fuel oil going up, price of, of gas going up at our gas pump. They're worried about us funding Saudi Arabian or other Middle Eastern Muslim terrorism. Don't concern yourself. Please, Islam is a religion of peace. All that the Saudis and the Pakistanis and the Egyptians and the Muslim Brotherhood, all they want to do is get along with all of us. And for those of you who are victims of xenophobia, that's a big word that means fear of something different, or Islamophobia, you're afraid of Islam, I think it's time that you really looked in the mirror and assessed what was at work in your own heart. You're probably bigoted. You're probably unkind. You're probably mean-spirited, and you certainly, certainly are not following the spirit of Jesus. Let's talk about foreign policy for a minute. China has got a great thing going on. Basically, the entire country is a slave labor camp, but so what? When we used to have slaves in this country, boy, oh boy, those were the days. Think of all that cotton in the fields. Who was going to get it out? Who was going to work in the blazing sun? That's why we had slaves. Well, now China has a massive 1 billion, 200 million person slave labor camp. And boy, I'm telling you right now, we benefit from their work. I encourage you, go up and down the aisle at Walmart. Take a look at where that stuff is made. Do you realize that you can buy a television or a DVD player or a VCR? Of course, they don't even make VCRs anymore, but you can buy these items so much cheaper than you used to. While the value of the dollar has been going down, by some sleight of hand, some miracle really, you're able to buy a lot of your chattel goods and your throwaway items far cheaper than you used to. Why? China, a slave labor camp. If those people are only making $10 a week, well, even if it's $10 a day, that's all they need. And 
They're providing us the stuff we want. So I say more power to them. And forced abortion in China? Well, they've already got 1.2 billion people. Why do they need more? Think about it. Saudi oil. <clears throat> there are a lot of people that say that we have an addiction to Saudi oil. I'm not buying. We've got polar bears up in the Alaskan National Wildlife Refuge, commonly known as Anwar. And there are greedy capitalist pigs, swine, human vultures that want to disrupt at least 2,000 acres of that pristine tundra, putting polar bears and elk and other creatures in danger in that area. Why? So that we can have oil? What do we need it for? The Saudis have 25% of the world's oil reserves. Let's use what they've got and leave the Alaskan tundra, the eastern coast of Florida, and above all, the Gulf of Mexico for us and for our children to enjoy. All right, I've got to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk about kids. Let's face it, children are a burden. I'm going to show you when we come back how to relieve yourself of some of that burden. Don't go away. Have you even done one story? One story. There are two places where socialism will work. In heaven, where it is not needed, and in hell, where they already have it. Sir Winston Churchill. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Fantasyland. I'm helping you, encouraging you to go along, to get in the flow of where everyone else is so that you're not always bucking the system. Trust me, you'll be happier. And what are one of the greatest sources of, of the depletion of human happiness? Children. Think, you moms and dads, you can warn others. When you first got married, you could do anything you wanted anywhere you wanted, anytime you wanted. And then along came that first child. And what happened? Well, you started to worry. You had to change diapers, vile and disgusting. You had to worry about a third mouth to feed, a third person to clothe, and they outgrow their clothing so fast. And it added an enormous economic burden to you. So my first advice is don't have children. There's so many people in the world already. We, we've got such limited natural resources. Why not forego the burden of children and live a happy, happy life? But if you are one of those self-consumed people that are determined to have kids, number one, don't say I didn't tell you so. You'll live to regret it. But if you are going to have children, number one, only have one, maybe two. Use birth control. Use birth control wisely. Use it often. Why take the risk of having three, four, five, six children when you can separate them neatly and conveniently, having one, two at the most? Besides, everyone knows if you have one child, they're going to learn to be self-interested. Some people call it selfish. I call it self-interested. And they'll grow up to be a better person for society. If you do have kids, please, by all means, send them to public school. Why spend the money on a private school when you could use that same money for a BMW payment? And why take the time? Why invest the grief and aggravation on homeschooling? My goodness, to bottle yourself up, to burden yourself like that? That's why we pay taxes. So we can give our children into the care of someone else six, eight hours a day, maybe even 10 with sports, who can teach them how to think like a good world citizen. I'll be right back with some closing thoughts. You're going to love this. Oh, man, you're going to love this. Both we and our fathers have sinned. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Vladimir Lenin said, religion is the opiate of the people. Now there's a thinker for you. Friends, the network has asked us to remove Mr. Terry for the remainder of today's program. The reason is quite simple. He was mocking that which is accurate. 
we want someone to say the things that Mr. Terry was saying, but to mean them. So here's our bit of encouragement for you. Think for yourself. Truth is what you determine it to be. And once you can synchronize your heart and soul with the truths of the universe as you define them, you will then be truly happy. Above all, stay out of politics.